A lot of swearing at the planning tribunal this afternoon as Liam Lawler cross-examined his old friend and business partner John Caldwell, who of course owns 50% of the Jackson Way land at Carrick Mines. Lawler swore today on the lives of his two grandchildren that he does not have any beneficial interest in the Jackson Way lands. Frank Dunlop had of course testified that Jim Kennedy, who owns the other 50% of the Jackson Way lands, told him that Mr Lawler did have an interest. Paul Cullen of the Irish Times joins us now. Paul, good evening. Good evening. Uh, Somehow or another, uh, explain this how, how this happened to me. Liam Lawler managed to ask himself some questions before the John Caldwell cross-examination. How did he achieve that? Yeah, well, as you know, Liam Lawler is representing himself these days at the tribunal, uh, and he's there most days with uh, one of his associates and uh, takes the matter very seriously. But he did ask for earlier in the year and receive permission uh, for when his own time uh, came in the box that he would be able to bring in a lawyer, um, a man called Pat Russell, um, who has asked questions um, of him so that uh, I suppose it avoid, avoided the rather odd situation we had when George Redmond, who was also representing himself, um, had to write down the questions on a sheet of paper and give them to a tribunal barrister who then asked them and then he talked about himself in the third person. But it'd be safe to assume that that's pretty much what Liam Lawler did for Mr. Russell. Yeah, he, I, I, and in fact, it was, it, the same as the last time. It's quite, quite amusing, really, because um, uh, at times, Liam Lawler was interrupting his own counsel, who was asking his own <laughs> questions, uh, because he was so anxious to get out of point. OK, stay with us as we have a listen to proceedings today, then. Were you involved in a common purpose with Mr Caldwell and Mr Kennedy in relation to Carrick Mines? No, I had no involvement with either party in any firm in Carrick Mines. Did you assist them in any way? I met at the request of the late Henry Beatty to my office, Mr Finnegan and Mr Kennedy and a Mr O'Flanagan in the Dáil, which was primarily, as I recall, to discuss a submission on the then current review of the county development plan associated with lands at Lucan. And those parties were also in the process of putting in a submission on Carrick Mines, and the two submissions were discussed. Mr Finnegan, who was primarily acting on the Lucan lands, can't recall the Carrick Mine lands being discussed at the meeting in the Dáil. But I don't have any detailed recollection of it being discussed, other than there were documents discussed for about 15 or 20 minutes, and that was the sum import of my involvement, and that would have happened repeatedly during the process of the review of the county development plan, with both applicants and objectors, that you met people, you heard what they wanted to do. In this instance, I had a direct interest in the Lucan submission, but I had no involvement to any degree on the Carrick Mines issues, vis-à-vis -vis its failure or success, or the detail of same. How many times did you meet Mr. Caldwell and Mr. Kennedy in relation to the Carrick Mines lands? That was the only occasion ever. I never, ever met Mr. Caldwell concerning the Carrick Mines lands. Did you ever visit the site at Carrick Mines at any stage? No. Ever? Never. No, I don't know where. I know it's out there somewhere on the right of the dual carriageway out the back of the silver tassie somewhere, but that's as much as I know about it. Were you involved in the zoning application directly or indirectly? No, only that submission went in in due course and was the basis of the applicants making proposals to the elected members, of which I was not one. Now, there has been a suggestion that you had a close connection with Mr Kennedy and Mr Caldwell. What would you say to that? Well, Mr Kennedy is a publican in Clondalk and a very prominent property owner there. I had a constituency office across the street. I was there every Saturday morning. And you invariably go over maybe for the bowl of soup or something at the lunchtime and then go off and do walk about for further advice centres throughout the constituency. And Mr Kennedy lived in Lucan. He was an auctioneer practising with an office in Lismore House and he was then involved in some format in the construction of two or three hundred houses in Western Park. He represented the Blake family, the Rogers family, the Stassen family. So Mr Kennedy was, a very, was very prominent in the area. His children went to the same school as mine. We knew each other on that basis. But you had no commercial involvement with him in these lands? Well, in the Lucan situation, there was a commercial involvement. The detail of his involvement, shareholdings, ownerships, I was never fully familiar with the detail of it, as is indicated here in the Carrick Mines. Uh, Mr Kennedy obviously keeps his cards very close to his chest, so I was never fully familiar. And I was at the outset of the opinion that he was acting for the Blake family when Super Quinn were constructing the centre and former farmlands of theirs and adjacent to my lands. So in that way, I was very familiar with Mr Kennedy and Mr Caldwell was the solicitor that I used in the food processing sector and in other general legal matters. Did you make any financial contribution to the acquisition of Carrick Mines? No. Did you receive any benefit in kind for advice you gave Mr Caldwell or Mr Kennedy? Absolutely not. Never ever arose. The tribunal has been told by Mr Dunlop that he believed you had an interest in the lands. Why would he believe that? Well, Mr Dunlop 
says more than his prayers, unfortunately. I don't know why. So Mr. Dunlop is incorrect. He's lying through his teeth. Absolutely. He's in a situation where he started off by suggesting that the only time Mr. Kennedy ever mentioned that I had an interest was after a vote, where it voted against the interests of the owners of these lands. He went on then to say to Mr. Gallagher that it was really a passing interest. It wasn't a commercial interest. I mean, you could have an interest in assisting somebody. He told Mr. Hanratty that he had deep suspicions. But in summary, he rejects his suggestions. Wholly oh, rejected. And he never ever spoke to me. And he spoke to me about everything else in the world. His own aspirations, his political ambitions, his family, everything. But he never ever mentioned Carrick Mines to me in the context of this matter. So any suggestion that you had a financial or other interest in these lands, what do you say to that? Just say that it's just untrue under oath. And did you assist with the expectation of sharing the profits? No. And to this day, from what you read in the newspaper, nobody has made any profits. And it's now 2004, and we're talking way back then, so absolutely no expectation. Do you expect today to make any money out of this? Absolutely not. I've no interest in a good, bad or indifferent. Have you ever had any documentation put you to the contrary? No, not that I'm aware of. Never seen anything to justify this matter. What do you say to the proposition that as a matter of probability you had a commercial involvement in these lands? Well, I'd just say that Mr. O'Neill could have been writing the headline in the Sunday Tribune because they have wrote on probability for the last. What's your answer? My answer is that this probability business is pure, incorrect information. So, we're absolutely clear. You had no direct, indirect or third-party interest in these lands. I have two grandchildren, and on their lives, I have no interest with this Carrick Mines lands and have never had and never will. <laughs> on his grandchildren's lives. That's a little bit unfair. He should have sworn on his own children's lives first before somebody else's, Paul. Yeah, he, I think he's two grandchildren, uh, but uh, quite recent arrivals. But uh, that was a soundbite that uh, uh, resonated around the country. Yeah, exactly. The wound up a day of denials by, by Mr. Lawler, Lord Liam Lawler, saying I have nothing to do with which, of course, he said all along and said voluminously. And John Caldwell mm. agreeing that Liam Lawler could have nothing. You, you wonder why Of course, we Frank Dunlop obviously doesn't, doesn't agree with that. But I, I know out in the real world, outside of tribunals, that the €13 million Euro in compensation that has been agreed for the owners of the lands at Carrick Mines hasn't been paid over and won't be paid over until such time as Jim Kennedy hands over the title deeds. Now, w would the names on those deeds contain any surprises, do you think? Well, they might contain some very far-flung uh, companies in the offshore regimes, but... Well, um, it's clear that um, John Caldwell owns a share of this land. It's clear that Jim Kennedy owns a la uh, share of this land. Um, whether anyone else is involved, um, we wouldn't be having a tribunal if the tribunal lawyers didn't think it was worth investigating that somebody, be it Liam Lawler or somebody else, could be involved. Are they getting anywhere? You'd have to say, um, on the face of it, no. But this, it's a bit of an iceberg, you know. You only see the tip and the, what's underneath um, is, is much bulkier. Um, they're going to go into... Um, a series of new modules shortly, um, all of which are land deals involving mm. Liam Lawler, John Caldwell and Jim Kennedy. Let's not forget, though, icebergs sink ships. Uh, that's right. And But, but uh, the Titanic was launched and, and got sunk within a week or two, didn't it? But this one seems to last <laughs> for years before the big white boat blew up. Paul Cullen of the Irish Times. Thank you.